so I'm back and I got a new pattern for you guys. This one is quick and easy and so much fun. Perfect for, for fall. This beautiful shawl. Ah, this is called the Viking braid. And look at the braid, how pretty it is. And it's a big old shawl. I did this years ago, actually. I love doing this technique. It's called the Jacob's Ladder, this here. And uh, I just updated it and translated it. And it's ready for fall. <laughs> so nice. Uh, it's a really easy one. Perfect for TV crocheting. It's just one row repeat. But there are lots of options. I made this big one with uh, some lovely drops air yarn. And then, come a little closer here. I made these little uh, bun things as well. I absolutely love these. So much fun to... And look at the little tassels. <laughs> Oh, I really like these. I have to make loads more. Uh, I'm using for that this little pack here I have from Shappers. Not sponsored, just I like it. <laughs> Which is the rich color pack of the Soft Fun mini skeins. I love working with these mini balls. So cute. Uh, so I'm using that for the base of my garland. And then adding just some, some drops of hot pink, of course. I mean, what would you do without hot pink? You know, that's the only thing missing to this box. <laughs> uh, so yeah. This is just a, this is a full tutorial, you guys, for this little shawl. Oh, yes, and I have a little announcement. This will be my 40th uh, published pattern on Ravelry. I'm pretty proud of myself, I must say. So I'm going to do a little special for you guys. The pattern will be 40% off for the first week, as well as everything you buy at the same time. So if you put this in your chart, cart, how do you say? in your basket, <laughs> in my Ravelry shop, and everything else you put at the same time in there will be 40% off at checkout. So, you know, just congratulations me for doing 40 patterns. <laughs> uh, I didn't do the, the, it's a full tutorial, but I didn't do the tassels. Uh, if you want a tutorial on that, please let me know in comments. I think I have in, included in something else, but I would happily make one of those because tassels are fun, fun, fun. So let's get to it. Woo Off we go. Hey, oh. Hello, hello. So I am going to show you how to make my Viking braid, my new pattern that I just released. Where is number six in this? There it is. So what I'm using is uh, this beautiful yarn, I have almost nothing left because I finished my shawl, is this beautiful yarn from Drops called Air, and it's just like Air working with it. I thankfully have just a tiny bit left here to show you how to start the shawl, and then in the second takes I show you on my shawl that I already make. So this is really quick and easy. So we just start, I have this yarn here and hook number five, six, and it's, uh, this is recommended for, for hook number four, no, five, but I really wanted to give, give it uh, extra air. So I went up one size, but you can use any yarn you like and a hook that is recommended or even just a tad bigger if you want to have it light. So we start by doing the magic circle. I have a video coming up on that as well, but it's just like this. You just lay your your yarn over here and the short tail goes to the left. And then we're going to hold on to the join here, go into the magic loop and pull our long tail up here all along holding the, the cross here. OK, and then we're going to start by doing four single crochets, no, four chains, sorry, one two, oop, three and four, and this here stands for one DC and one chain. And now we are going to do three double crochets inside the magic loop. And so you see, I'm working over the tail here as well. It's very important. Okay, one, two, and three. And then one chain in the middle. And then another three double crochets. One chain and one double crochet. Okay, so that's the first row here. Four chains. 
uh, one that, that is the first DC and one chain, three double crochets, one chain here in the middle, other three, one chain and a double crochet. Okay, that's row one. On to row two. This is actually just on to, it's just three rows really written, and then then you just repeat row three, but we're gonna do row four four rows total here then. So on to row two, and we start with 10 single, uh, well, what's wrong with me? 10 chains, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. And this here stands for one double crochet, which is the first three, and then seven more chains, because we're gonna be doing our chains here for the Viking braid to braid up. Okay, and now we are going to work three double crochets into, into the DC spaces here. So we're not going to work anything into this first chain space here. And we're not working into the, 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 the loops. We're working in DC spaces, which means just the space between two double crochets like this. So what is nice when you have this long uh, um, chain here at the end, I like to put my little finger here, my what is it called? Pinky, winky. <laughs> so to get it to be sort of manageable. So I put my winky pinky here and then I yarn over and go in between double crochets one and two here, excluding the chains in the beginning. Okay. And we're going to work three double crochets here. One, two, and three in between the in the DC space here. And now again, other three here in the next DC space here between these two. And this is the magic of the shawl actually. Well, the magic is the braiding bit, which is just super fun. But um, the other magic bit is that you're always working into the double crochet spaces and not into loops. So that's really nice. So now we have three here between these two and three between the second two. And now we're going to skip this chain here and we're going to do seven chains. One, two, three, four, five, six, six. Sorry, I went over to Icelandic there midway. <laughs> and again, and you see how I'm holding here so that it's easier to work. Now we're going to do three double crochets here in this DC space and three here. Okay, and I'm holding here with another finger actually, but just so that it's easier to work. The first one, oops, sorry. <laughs> one, two, and three. And another three here in the, in the second. Double crochet space here. One, two, and three. And now we are going to do seven chains. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And we're going to yarn over and we're going to find the third here. One, two, three, the third chain here from the end. And we're going to go into that one. Okay. Like so. And do one double crochet there. Okay, so this is what it looks like now after the second row. And now we can pull at our magic circle. Do take care to pull it, uh, you know, be gentle when pulling at it. We don't want to break the yarn here. Okay, so this looks not so great, but it's correct. <laughs> so that was row two then. Okay. It's going to get better, I promise. <laughs> On to row three, which is actually the repeat row, but I'm going to do four rows with you here total. So again, now we start with 10 uh, chains. And that's the first three is for the first double crochet. And then seven more. One, two, three, four five, six, seven. We're always going to be doing these chains in sevens. And now you see, I put my pinky here to get the correct um, sort of position. And now we're going to do three double crochets here in the first DC space, which is this one here. So yarn over, put your pinky here so that it doesn't, and go into the first space here. And we're going to work three double crochets. One, two, 
one. two and three and as you can see we're skipping the chains and the first DC and we're always working into the spaces and now we're going to work one space no one DC into each space until we get to the last space then we're going to do an increase again okay so now we're going to do one 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 and then two here in the middle bit okay so one DC into each DC space you see until we get to the last double crochet space before the middle bit. In this row three, it is one, two, it's three double crochets here. And then into the last DC space here, this one here, we're going to do two. because we're going to do a little increase, obviously, as well at the pointy bit in the middle. Because this is a shawl or a bunting. One and two. And then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And then we're going to mirror that on the other side. We are going to skip the chains here. We're going to do two double crochets into the first DC space. One and two. And then one double crochet into each. DC space until there's only one left here that is now three you see two here three single like just and then we're going to do three here in the same one here at the end two three okay and then we do our seven chains straight three four six yeah and again, we're going to work one double crochet into the third. You count them here. One, two, three into the third chain from counting from the end. So those three chains stand as one DC. OK, again, not looking great, but this is how it's supposed to look after row three. OK, let's do one more together. OK, so we finished the first three rows of the shawl and the third row is actually the repeat row for the whole of the shawl because it's all the same after this, okay? Which is just wonderful. You don't have to think at all, which is beautiful. And we're working into the DC spaces as opposed to the chains, the loops. So it's really, it's a delight. I just tell you, I can tell you that. <laughs> it's really great TV project or traveling, what have you. Okay, so I'm just going to go over how the repeat rows are. They're the same for the rest of the shawl. You start by doing your 10 uh, chains here. And the first three stand for the first DC of the row. And then the seven chains that are always in our our uh, chains, uh, chain spaces here, yeah. And then we start by de doing three double crochets here in the first space, yeah. And that's the increase at the beginning of the row. And then we do one into each DC space until there's only one DC sp space left before the middle, which is here. And there you do two. Okay, and then you do seven chains, skip the chains, and then you do two as well here in the first DC space after the, the center. And then you just do one into each until there's only one left, and there you do three. So the increase is three here at the beginning of row, two here, just the last one before the chains in the middle, two, first one after the chains, and then three here at the end, okay? I'm going to do this one more row with you, and then there's always just one single crochet in between in all the DC um, spaces here in between and that's the only thing that's going to change when you have like 20 rows done it's just going to be loads more of dcs here in between these increase points yeah but let's do row four together just in case just to show you so everybody feels calm and comfortable one two three four five six seven eight nine and ten okay and we turn and we start, see, I put my pinky here and yarn over and we start by doing three double crochets into the first chain space. No, the first DC space, sorry. One, two, and three. And then we're going to do one double crochet into each DC space here until there's only one left before the center. And here in row four, it's one, two... Three, four, 
and five. And these will always be, there will always be more DCs here in between, like I explained. And now we have one DC space left here, this one here. We're going to do two double crochets there. This really is a delight to hook up. I mean, I made my huge shawl in like three nights and it was just like whizzing, <laughs> whizzing by. Okay, I did the two here, the increase. Now we're going to do seven chains as always. Three, four, five, six, seven. I do like the number seven. It's a holy number. <laughs> and now pinky here to get the stretch here. Yarn over, go into the first DC space after the center chains and do two double crochets there. One and two. No, sorry, one and two. And now we do one into each of these spaces here until there's just one left. Yeah, it's really lovely to hook on this shawl. And I mean, this yarn is amazing. It's not, uh, I was not sponsored in any way by drops or anything, but it is lovely to work with. And it's like air having, it's like a cloud shawl. <laughs> Okay, that's one DC into each DC space here until there's only one left. And then we're going to do three. One, two, and three. And then seven chains, four, five, six, seven. And then we're going to yarn over and find here the third chain here from the end one two three this one here and work one double crochet there so that's why the three extra here in the beginning right because we did ten here for this et voila and then it's just this same repeat over and over again and next up I'm going to show you how we lace up our viking braid <laughs> When you start braiding, do look what was your last row. Was it, this is the wrong side. This is the right side here. So it's nicer to braid it up with the, uh, on the side that you had, you did your last row. So it's just a tiny bit nicer here, the edge, right? Okay, so turn it up, facing upwards to you after you've done the last row, right? Insert your hook into the one chain space here and get the chains from the row two and pop them up like so. Okay, and then you just get the next one and pop it up like so. And the next one and pop it up. <laughs> this is fun. Uh, and you do it the same each for all three braids. Here is our one chain space from row one. We're going to get our chains here up from there, whoop, like so. And the next one. And the next one, always the same. And then just pull at it and then they come really nice. And you can see them here. I don't know if you see them very well here in the video, but I'll show you on the big one. And you do this on all, for all three braids. Up. And then our piece looks lovely. <laughs> Not like the hot mess before. Oh no, uh, it's unraveled here. Oh, that was good. <laughs> Not like a hot mess. Oh, oh no, unraveled. <laughs> you see? And then you just continue the same way. Now, one. Okay, so I was thinking to myself as I was sitting, darning in the ends of my shawl, that I should probably just film it and show you because even if I think it's very simple, but well, everything, you always, when you know how to do something, you think it's simple, but when you don't, it's good to see, right? So this is the shawl, isn't it pretty? Ah, la, 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 la. <laughs> this is a shawl, it's huge. And so, whoop, it's difficult to film all of it. Let's see if we can, okay. So here I've done the braid up on this side here and darned in the ends, because that's the thing that I want to show you is, this is like this now here before braiding up our Viking braid here on, the the top border of the shawl. I really like this finish. I think it is very nice, elegant. Uh, so then you have all these ends here from the changing of the colors and it's a bit awkward to weave them 
I feel into the chains, you know, I mean, you could do that, but then they would sort of like, I want to have the chains intact because it's an important detail, I think. So what I do is I hook them up, I braid it up and then I rewind the ends. So I'm just going to show you how I do that. If you don't need that, you just don't watch. So, but I was just thinking, why not? Okay, let's go into normal mode here. Ah, sorry, just have to. Okay, so obviously what you need for the darning bit is a pair of scissors. Mine are matching the colors of my shawl because I'm just awesome like that. <laughs> and a darning needle. I do feel that it's nicer to have one that is with a bit of a point to it. Um, this one here is better actually. Uh, but we're not going to start with that. We're going to start with the braiding up of our Viking braids here on the top. Okay, so I already showed you probably how you do it. You can do it with, yeah, I showed you how you can do it with your hands. But it's also nice just to have a big hook. This is like number eight or something. Yeah, eight millimeter. millimeter. So here we go. Whoop, let's put it in this direction. So I just insert my hook here into the first single chain space here that we did in the first in the first row. And I'm just going to put the next bit up and continue and pull it through like so. It's basically like crocheting. <laughs> so I just get the next chain chains here and pull them up from the last one. I very much enjoy oops, focusing this part. It is delightful <laughs> because it does look a bit like wonky when you're working it and it just has these, you know, it's not, it's not, it doesn't look fancy while you're working it. But then when you braid it all up in the end and the magic happens, Good times. <laughs> it's the simple pleasures, I feel. Everyday things. Everyday circumstances. When those make you happy, it's all good, right? Okay. Ah, and then you pull it and it just does. I mean, this is... This is nice. It really is a very nice finish, isn't it? <laughs> Even if I do say so myself. Mm -hmm. Just gives this an extra ampere at the, on the top border. Mm -mm -mm. And then the fun bit starts, obviously, when the color starts, because that's where the braids really pop, actually, because then you get this alternance of colors. And I was very happy with the colors. When I'm happy, I wanted to make a shawl that goes with. I have this big trench coat, sort of, but in denim. It's really fucking cool. Black, uh, which I will be using now for winter, definitely. And I wanted to make a shawl to go with that. That's why I have this dark here. Dark, well, it's really just black, not even dark gray. And this green here is just, oh my God, absolutely fucking love it. <laughs> they actually do have bright pink neon as well. And I really want to do like, but I have so many pink shawls. <laughs> and so now here we're getting, you know, the ends, just leave them, let them lie. You don't really have to think very much about them. And then we weave them in. Uh, it's better to weave them in. Once we have braided up our Viking braid here. Okay, I'm gonna do it with my hand actually, because I think that's when you do it with your hand, then you just do it like this. And to excuse my nails, I thought it was more important to film this than to say, no, I can't do that because my nails are perfect. As opposed to every other fiber, like, you know, 
part of my presentation of myself. <laughs> Very elegant always. Uh, okay, almost there. And then, of course, you can do the extra last row that I, that's in the written pattern if you don't want to put tassels. But, I mean, why wouldn't you want to, to put, put tassels? I mean, who doesn't want, want to put tassels on a shawl? It's just insane, I think. But that is included in the written pattern as well. But, I mean, tassels all the way. And then when we pull it in, Uh, oh, and this is just so soft. It's like having clouds around my neck. I love it. Okay, so now we have all these ends here. And next okay, up. Okay, next up is weaving in the ends. I've got one like a needle here with a point, nice pointy point. <laughs> and first, I'm going to show you how we're going to. Weave in the end from our ma magic circle. Okay, so the magic circle is brilliant, obviously, and I love it, and I use it a lot, but it is very important. <laughs> I cannot stress this enough. To uh, really take care to weave that end in very well, because if it does um, unravel, it's just a pain in the, you know what. So I actually did a little video the other day of how to fix a magic circle. I will probably upload this that soon after this because, um, I mean, it's it's not, it's okay if it happens, but it's better just to do it really nice and metic meticulously from the start, from the get-go, okay? So here I have my magic circle tail. I'm going to pull at it really as tightly as I can, but do take care not to break it. And then I'm just going to do, like sort of do a few, oops, it's not focusing so i'm going to do a few more circles just inside here because it's just one string of yarn right so we want to really just go maybe another circle here in the first row and i always take like one step back when i'm darning okay like so and a bit more actually you really want to secure this end very nicely. It is, uh, it's not, yeah, it, it's not pleasant when it breaks. <laughs> but like I said, I have a video ready of that because it did happen to me the other day. And uh, I'll upload that soon because, you know. Uh, yes, yes, dangerous crochet. <laughs> That's me. <laughs> and then when I cut the end, actually, I'm going to, you would rather want to cut it on the other side of your shawl because that's the back side we have a back side and and front side of this shawl because the braid is just on one side so you want to pull your tail to the back of the shawl and when i cut i was cut like at an angle like this so that it's like pointier at the top and leave a little bit, a bit of a tail because then you see here and then just when you pull at it, then it goes inside. Okay, so that was the magic loop. And now we're going to do the a few of these tails as well to show you how we weave them in. And we're weaving in here on the back side of the, of the shawl. And what you want to do when you weave in is... Should there be a blue one here? No, oh, hmm, strange. Okay, so when you weave in your ends, it's it's just you know it's just basic, very basic like straightforward. Um, you know, you want to do it well so that they, that they don't unravel, unravel, and then you want to do it neat so you know in the same color obviously. And so I'm going to take here. I'm going to go through here into the black and take care not to like pull at it too much here in the first one and then we're going to take a step back like that to secure our thread and just go a few more here sort of under the black and inside of the light blue okay and then tuck 
and that's it. I just do two motions for each tail. So here, under the black and into the green. Step back and a couple of more are coming up in the green. Don't get it. And voila! One more. And it's really, just like I say, very straightforward what you're trying to do. Just neat and secure. Do that the best you can. <laughs> uh, okay, and then, like I said before, when I cut, I like to cut it sort of like at an angle so that the top bit here is, you know, that, so it's going to be hidden better inside the weave, right? And just leave, leave a little bit of a tail because that will be get tucked in when you stretch on it, right? And that's it. So I'm now going to finish to weave in my ends and then block it. Maybe I'll do a clip of that for you as well, yeah? <laughs> this is lovely. It's huge, by the way. <laughs> okay, it's all finished and ready. Woo! I've woven in all my ends, my tails, and I have placed it now. It's dry still. So I'm just going to wet block it with a little bit of... Uh, warm water um, that way it's quicker to to dry and also with this yarn I have once blocked it like wetting it completely and it really just gives a lot of um, it grows a lot so I'm not going to do that I just put, pinned it down the way I want it okay I'm going to show you e so one thing I wanted to mention <laughs> So I kind of like it to be, because you can decide which is the back side and which is the front side, just where you do your braid on at, right? And I kind of like it when that is from, like the last row is then from the front side. It's just a bit neater here, this here, you see, than what it is like this. I mean, it's a minor detail, but I forgot about it. <laughs> of course, like always, I'm just doing this for you, just to show you the mistakes, like possible mistakes. <laughs> No, but I had already braided mine up and didn't notice, but I do prefer it to check which is your last row here and keep that, have that as the front side. It's just a bit neater, but I mean, this is quite fine. And I love the yarn. It looks great. Um, I'm going to give it a bit, a bit of a spray and then I'll let it dry and voila. Ah, yeah, and then I have to fasten the, the um, what's it called? The, the tassels. I have to make the tassels as well. And just if it's not quite even here all the way on the top, it's really good to use like a straight edge like this here, just so that you can use that to get your, you know, everything. Oh, you can see the, okay, like this. Oh, exciting. Yay, yay. Okay, so I just want to show you how I just hook my banner together. So you take the loop here from one end insert it into the one on the side and then this is just a bit of a fudge take the other end here and pull it through and then just sort of it's not great but just pull it through like this easy does it and then we don't have to sew it together or anything let's see do, 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 do. fascinating slow tv and voila! You see? And then it's all strung together like this. And it looks kind of neat. Sort of like rustic. So you can fasten them together like that. And next up are the tassels. Now one thing here. These loops here at the end. You can have in the written pattern. I have one extra row. Where you can, if you want to close it off. And not do tassels. Then you can do that. Or... These are a bit long here, the loops where you can put your tassels into. You can also in the last row just do three sing uh, three chains for your last uh, chains here. And then you start with six and do three and three, and then they become a bit smaller. But I did like to have them big like this. Well, I just worked with it, around it. So, for example, in this one here, which I made with a 
some kind of a worm from Shepherds. Can't remember what it's called. Here I just did my, I just worked my tassel straight onto here, and I think it was kind of cute. Cute. So then you don't really have to even sew it on. You just work your tassel up into the last loop here, which I think it turned out quite nice. Here you can see the braid better. Yeah. <laughs> so nice. And on my big shawl, I just put some beads up on here because you see it is a bit long, the last loop here. So I just put some extra bead up on this one here. It was a bit tricky. I had to find um, pearls. What do you call this? Beads, sorry beads that worked that I could like put a tiny crochet hook into and pull it through but I think it looks kind of nice and look at these tassels oh I had so much fun making the tassels yesterday I'm just gonna show you <laughs> aren't they nice and I did something new I had these rings so instead of like doing the normal tassel where you where you uh, do this here I was I just used the rings as a, so it was sort of like Viking inspired to have a bit. Maybe it's a bit fancy for the Vikings, but modern day Vikings, let's say. Look, ah, I was very happy with this. And on the garland, which is also called, I am learning bunting. Uh, this is a new word to me. Ooh, I love these. So for the garland, I did the same. I just put some extra always um, beads up on that last last loop. So there are many possibilities. You can either make the loop smaller, the last one for the last row, just three single uh, three uh, chains instead of seven, or you can do it like this, work it straight into, or you can put some beads up on it. And I must say that the garland is a bit of a favorite because then I made all these tiny little tassels. Aren't they cute? Jesus Lord, I mean, ah, oh, this is too <laughs> Oh, yes, 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 yes. Happy, happy, happy. So that's it, you guys. Uh, the pattern is up. Like I said, it's my 40th pattern on Ravelry. So I'm super psyched. And if you buy the pattern for the first week, you get the pattern 40% off. And all your all the purchases that you make at the same time. So if you put this this um, pattern into your, your cart, uh, then everything you buy in that same cart is 40% off. So you can make... If you wanted some of my other patterns as well, then this is the time. Oh, I mean, yes, yes. We like this, right? It's so fun. And even though it's sort of like a summery pattern and I was I was trying, I was going to do it in August. Yeah. But uh, I mean, we need stuff to lighten up our, our uh, beginning of fall as well, right? I'm going to put these up on my pink wall and be happy. I hope you are too. So happy, happy, joy, joy. Hope you're all well. Sending love and light your way. Ciao.